In every Pokemon game, there are always a group of sinister thugs led by some kind of criminal mastermind that attempt a various assortment of world-dominating or destroying schemes. Evil teams are the way that Pokemon have done their villains since the beginning, and every evil team has a leader and a set of admins that, well, lead the way. And as a part of my facts on every insert Pokemon or character here series, we're going to be looking at facts about every evil team leader and admin from the main series Pokemon games in today's video. So with that said, why don't we just get to it? Starting of course in Kanto with the OG Team Rocket, two of Giovanni's Pokemon on his final team that you face when challenging the Viridian City Gym in many of the games, but Red and Blue particularly, are Nidoking and Nidoqueen. With that said, it's noteworthy that in Red and Blue, the only place that you can catch their pre-evolutions, Nidoran male and female outside of the Safari Zone, is Route 22, which is right outside of Viridian City, meaning that their placement in this route could possibly be an intentional reference to Giovanni's team, or a sign of things to come later in the game, since it's one of the very first areas that you get to explore in the game. Archer, as well as the rest of Team Rocket's admins, get their names from things relating to rockets or other space-related things. Now, coming from Team Rocket, this makes all the sense in the world, but given that all of the Team Rocket admins received their unique identities and names in Gen 4, this is very fitting and likely intentional given that the evil team of the Gen 4 base games, Diamond and Pearl, are heavily associated with all things space-related. Ariana is one of the Team Rocket admins that had the honor of having her design be based on one of the original Team Rocket executive sprites from Generation 2, in this case the female one. However, in the Gen 2 games there is a slight oversight with the Team Rocket admins specifically, as when you battled them, the music that is played is the generic trainer battle theme as opposed to the rocket battle theme that is used for the grunts and other members of the team. Petrel is a character who debuted in Heart Gold and Soul Silver since the Rocket admins in Gen 2 didn't have unique identities. As a part of this, Petrel's character is the combination of two different admins in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and this combination of characters actually introduces a plot hole in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Since his design combines one of the admins that you face at the Rocket headquarters and the one who disguises himself as the director of the Goldenrod Radio Tower, he appears first at the Team Rocket HQ, when he also at the exact same time should be in the radio tower preparing for the takeover from the inside that would happen directly after you finish going through the headquarters. As I mentioned with Petrol, an interesting thing about Team Rocket's admins is that none of them had unique identities or appearances in the original Gen 2 games. Proton, just like Petrol, was designed from scratch by combining two characters in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, a rocket grunt that you face at Slowpoke Well, and a generic executive that you faced at the Goldenrod Radio Tower. Both of these characters only have one Pokemon each, a Coffin and a Golbat respectively, which is why Proton uses both of them on his team in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. A very nice yet subtle detail involving Maxi comes from, believe it or not, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. An obvious interesting detail about Maxi and Archie in these games is that they use their original designs, not their remake designs. But something that flies under the radar is that his Camerupt is not holding its Megastone during your battle with him either. While this might not seem to be important, the fact that Lysander's Gyarados is holding its Megastone in the same games suggests that this is a detail that contributes to the fact that this version of Maxi is from a world without Megastone. 
Mega Evolution, hence his original design, and is a very nice attention to detail at that. Despite Pokemon Emerald combining the plots and the usage of the evil teams from Ruby and Sapphire, Courtney is the only admin or leader of either team who cannot be battled at all in this game. Tabitha debuted into the anime in the episode A Three Team Scheme, however he was mistakenly given the wrong name of Field Commander Harlan in this episode. From this point on though, his name was corrected to Tabitha in all future appearances. A super coincidental yet cool fact about Archie is that of all of the Hoenn-based games where he serves as an antagonist, their initials in chronological order of the game's release spell out the word Seas, consisting of Sapphire, Emerald, and Alpha Sapphire, which is clearly very fitting for everything that Archie stands for. Fittingly, the same thing that happened to Tabitha also happened to Shelly, as her anime debut also took place in the A Three Team Scheme episode, and she was also given the wrong name of Tactical Commander Isabel in this episode, but like Tabitha, her name was also fixed in all future appearances. When it comes to Matt, the last battle that you face him in in Alpha Sapphire is a double battle with a Grunt alongside him, where their Pokemon consist of a Sharpedo, Muck, and Mightyana. Meanwhile, in the same exact games, the first battle with the other Team Aqua admin Shelly is the exact same thing, a double battle with a Grunt alongside her with their Pokemon consisting of a Mightyana, Muck, and Sharpedo, although in this case they have a Grimer and Carvana instead, as it is an earlier point in the game. Cyrus was the very first evil team leader to have their age confirmed when Looker mentions in Pokemon Platinum in Veilstone City that he is 27. Interestingly, it seems like your late 20s is the time to try and take over the world in Pokemon, as Tabitha of Team Magma is also stated to be 27. Mars is the first Team Galactic admin that you come across in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, followed by Jupiter and Saturn. This is likely intentional, as not only does that represent the order of the planets that they are named after, but Mars being encountered first is the planet closest to the Sun, while Saturn encountered last is the planet farthest from the Sun amongst those who share a name with a Team Galactic admin. Jupiter had a name change in the Spanish versions of the Gen 4 games, being called Ceres there, likely because Jupiter is the name of a male Roman god. This creates an ironic scenario for Jupiter as well, as Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, while Ceres, a dwarf planet, is the smallest of the five dwarf planets that are currently known. In Pokemon Platinum, every single Pokemon that Saturn as well as the rest of the Galactic Admins use that have a specified gender is interestingly enough, female. Similar to the fact about Mars, another very possibly intentional fact involving Charon is that in Pokemon Platinum, he is the only admin that you don't battle, and the number of times you battle each admin correlates to their namesake's distance from the sun. Mars is the closest and battled the most at four times, Jupiter is next in distance and battled three times, and Saturn is after that and battled two times. Charon, being named after one of Pluto's moons, is even farther away from the sun and as such isn't battled at all. If you take a look at N's design, you'll notice that he has a Rubik's Cube-like object hanging from his belt. Well, based on the presence of some concept art that was reserved specifically for this cube, along with its accompanying notes that discussed the solving of the puzzle that would supposedly reveal an inner cube with a keyhole upon its solving, suggests that this cube was actually going to be a part of Black and White's plot at one point in development. Introduced in the middle of Gen 5 and Black and White 2, Colrus was most likely intended by Game Freak to be a hint of things to come, since, as he puts it, the theme of my research is bringing out the power of Pokemon. Is it possible to bring out their maximum power through the bond they share with their trainers, or is there some other, different method? This perfectly describes the concept of Mega Evolution that would feature in X and Y which released just a little over a year after Black and White 2, leading to the idea that this was in fact some intentional foreshadowing. 
A cool part of Getsis' character is that his Hydreigon in black and white has a move that is super effective to all of N's Pokemon on his final team, showing his plan for betrayal from the very beginning. Furthermore, Getsis' Hydreigon is the only Pokemon owned by an NPC that has minimum friendship, which means it's also the only one that can use the move Frustration at its strongest power. While each member of the Shadow Triad have essentially identical appearances to one another, there is early concept art that shows each of them with a more visually distinct design, suggesting that some more individuality was originally planned for each of their characters instead of being basically a single conglomerate like they are in the final games. Team Plasma's Seven Sages have an interesting connection to each other with their names as each one is a reference to color. Bronius is derived from brown, Giaio, and I'm probably saying that terribly, is Italian for yellow, Gorm is Gaelic for blue, Rude is the Dutch word for red, Ryoku comes from Ryoku Shoku, which is Japanese for green, and finally, Zinzalin is used in French as the name of a reddish purple color. Getsis, as also a part of the Seven Sages, is the only exception to this, however his name has a fascinating origin as well, as it is a romanization of the musical notes G and C sharp, which are the notes used on the timpanis in his battle theme. While it can be debated whether this was intentional or not, Lysander and his goals have some undeniable similarities with Hitler of all people. Lysander's goal is to wipe out everyone who he deems not beautiful, which without going into too much detail, is more or less what Hitler was going for, and the name of Lysander's invention, the Holocaster, sounds distinctly similar to the term Holocaust. Aliana and the rest of the Team Flare admins have names that connect to one another as well, as they are all derived from the rankings of Solar Flares, which use the letters A, B, C, M, and X to classify them, which are all the first initials of the Team Flare admins. Okay, so fair warning, this next one is a speculative fact because it's not official as far as I'm aware and is just a hunch on my part, but I really do feel like there might be something here with this. So if there's one thing that Bryony and the rest of the Team Flare admins would be known for, it's their very colorful hairstyles. Like even by anime Japanese standards, they're pretty noticeably colorful. Anyway, it is possible that given Team Flare's theme, this could actually be a reference to heat signatures. As in alphabetical order by name, the color of the admin's hair starts off as what would be a hot color with Aliana and her orange hair, and progressively cools off as you get to Mabel and her blue hair. Zero Sick is kind of an outlier here, but he's also kind of an outlier in general as the only male admin as well, so I wanted to bring it up anyway and let you guys take it for what it's worth. Something that applies to Celosia as well as the rest of the Team Flare admins, and Lysander for that matter, is that all of their Pokemon correlate with their own gender. Meaning all of Celosia's and the other female admins' Pokemon are female, while Zero Sick and Lysander's Pokemon are all male. Mabel's Houndoom actually levels down from one battle to the next, being level 48 when you face her at Frost Cavern, but level 46 when you battle her again at Lysander Lab. Zero Sick owns a Malamar in both the games and anime, and in the anime his Malamar is voiced by Mark Thompson, who has also voiced some very noteworthy characters in Yu-Gi-Oh, including Duke Devlin and Chaz Princeton. Guzma debuted into the anime later than any other evil team leader has so far, with his first appearance coming in the 115th episode of the Sun and Moon arc. He's also the first evil team leader in the anime to compete in a Pokemon League Championship tournament. Plumeria is directly named after a genus of plants which also produce flowers that are most commonly yellow and different shades of pink in color, which explains Plumeria's hairstyle and hair color perfectly. The second time you battle Lusamine in Sun and Moon is also the only trainer battle in the main series games to date where your Pokemon will gain experience but you do not get any prize money for winning. 
Ironically, Faba's Japanese name is Saubo, which comes from the German word Sauban, which relates to the Faba bean where he gets his English name. However, his German name does not use this word at all, and is simply Fabian instead. Speaking of names, it's rather fitting that Wick, who is known as the Assistant Branch Chief at the Ether Foundation, underneath Faba's Branch Chief status, would get her name from a German word for the Vicia genus of plants, which are included in the Fabaceae family of legumes, which is also where Faba's name originates. I covered in a previous video how part of Piers' battle music is remixed from the theme used for N's final battle in Pokemon Black and White, but on top of that, part of it is also a remixed piece of Team Rocket's hideout theme from Generation 1. Oleana is the only member of the Macrocosmos organization that does not specialize in steel types, instead using an all-female team of Pokemon that are also more feminine in nature. When it comes to Chairman Rose, this one isn't explicitly about him, but it's still pretty cool. Chairman Rose's first appearance in any kind of anime material came during the first episode of Pokemon Twilight Wings, where he played a major role. Well, in that episode just outside of Winden Stadium, there is a trainer with a Pikachu present that has a striking similarity to none other than Ash Ketchum. And there we have it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe as well if you're new, and check out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify, as well as my Pokemon Cardinal project here on YouTube, if you would like to support the channel further, which is extremely appreciated. Anyway, I will be back on Tuesday with another video, so hit that notification bell for it in the meantime, and until then, as always, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later.